This lesson has been all about applying the properties of those different types of bonds that we've learned about in order to understand the way that matter presents itself in the real world all around us. For example, in the previous video, we talked about whether matter in nature presents itself as solids, liquids, or gases at room temperature. In this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at another important concept to understand with matter in the real world around us based on the types of bonds holding that matter together. The concept we're going to be taking a look at is how bonds affect the solubility of a substance. It means almost exactly what the word sounds like. It's the ability of something to dissolve. And when I say dissolve, I mean it's the ability of something to spread out completely evenly in another substance. That's what dissolving is. Let's take a look at how bonds affect solubility. And the first kind of substance we're going to look at is the easiest one to understand, a metallic substance. Metallic substances form tightly bonded solids, usually with really high melting and boiling points, remember, but they are so tightly bonded with that sea of electrons holding everything together that they do not dissolve in water or even in other solvents other than water because those solvents like water can't make their way in between the atoms of the metal. If you take a piece of iron like in the picture and drop it in water, the water isn't going to sneak its way inside the iron. The iron isn't like a sponge that's going to soak up the water, and they do not really mix together at all. Now, metallic substances can dissolve sometimes, but they do not dissolve in water. Instead, they dissolve in each other. Because what you can cause metallic substances to do, because they have a sea of electrons, you can cause the atoms of one metal to share the sea of electrons with another metal. Take, for example, iron and chromium, which mix together to make stainless steel. Now, in order to mix these two, I can't just put the solids together. I have to melt them both, which takes a considerable amount of energy. But let's say I do that. I add enough energy to melt the iron and the chromium. What will happen is, because they both have a sea of electrons of their own, when I mix them together, they're just going to share their electrons in the sea of electrons, and the chromium is going to mix perfectly evenly into the iron, so it looks like one substance. Then, when it cools off, it's going to form a solid that is actually one metal substance, chromium, dissolved in another, iron. This is known as an alloy, and metals are able to dissolve this way because the atoms can share their sea of electrons that are characteristics of all metals. That's how metallic substances can dissolve, but it's most important to remember they do not dissolve in water. What about another type of substance that's strongly bonded? An ionic substance, which remember also form very, very tightly bonded solid substances, crystal substances. Well, here's the deal. Water has positive and negative parts around the outside because water is a polar molecule. And those positive and negative parts around the outside of a water molecule attract anything that's positive or negative. And because ionic substances are made up of positive and negative ions, they will attract the positive and negative parts of the water molecules. So each negative chlorine ion pulls on the positive parts of the water molecules, and each positive sodium ion pulls on the negative parts of the water molecules. And what ends up happening is the water molecules will surround the ions and separate them from each other and cause them to mix evenly in between the water molecules. Ionic substances tend to dissolve in water. Now, Here's what can happen sometimes. We looked at this substance before, chromium oxide. And when chromium and oxygen form ions, they form really strong ions. Remember, chromium had a six plus charge and oxygen had a two minus charge. Those big numbered ions are going to pull together very, very tightly. And sometimes when that happens, they pull together so tightly that just like metals, 
water molecules really can't get in. Even though they're attracted to the ions, they just don't have the strength of attraction that the ionic substance does. So there are ionic substances that don't dissolve in water. But many ionic substances do dissolve in water, at least to an extent. And when ionic substances dissolve in water, they always cause the water to become a conductor of electricity. All right, what about another type of substance? Let's take a look at polar covalent substances. Remember, polar covalent substances are substances that share pairs of electrons unevenly, so they have positive and negative sticky spots around the outside. Those positive and negative sticky spots are excellent places for water molecules with their positive and negative sticky spots for those water molecules to stick. And polar covalent substances, because they have those positive and negative dipoles, will be attracted to water's positive and negative dipoles. Water molecules will surround them, they'll stick to the outside, they'll separate them, in general, polar covalent substances will dissolve in water. And it's all because they're able to attract the positive and negative dipoles of the water molecules. As you can see in this graphic here, every once in a while there's an area where a positive dipole and a negative dipole are connected by a weak bond. Now water is what we would call a polar solvent because it has positive and negative sticky spots around the outside of the water molecule. There are some solvents that are nonpolar, like this solvent known as hexane. Hexane is made up of molecules that have an even positive charge all the way around the outside. It is a nonpolar molecule. What would happen if we mix together a polar substance in a nonpolar solvent like hexane? Well, think about it. The polar substance is going to be attracted to its own positive and negative sticky spots, holding it together as either a solid or a liquid substance. But it's attracted. It's got a fairly strong attraction force. Whereas the nonpolar molecules really don't have any reason at all to attract to that polar substance. So because the strength of attraction between the polar molecules, in this case of formaldehyde in the middle, because that strength of attraction is much greater than any attraction between the nonpolar substance at all, these substances will not evenly mix. The polar substance is going to clump together and the nonpolar substance is going to remain separate from it. Let's take a look at what happens to nonpolar substances when we mix them into water. Iodine is an example of a nonpolar substance. It's not going to be attracted to these water molecules at all. There's no real reason for it to want to stick to water because it doesn't have those positive and negative areas around the outside. Water, on the other hand, is extremely attracted to itself because it has its own positive and negative dipoles that want to stick together. So what's going to happen if we mix iodine in with water? Well, the iodine is just basically going to get squeezed out. It's not going to have any reason to stay spread out in the water whatsoever because the water is attracted to itself and the iodine is not really attracted to the water at all. What happens though if instead of water, we would mix iodine in a substance like hexane? When you mix together a nonpolar substance in another nonpolar substance, these don't have those positive and negative sticky dipoles that want to stick to each other. Instead, because there's really no strong attraction at all, those really weak attractive forces, those dispersion forces that we talked about, can actually take hold in a substance that's made up of only nonpolar substances. And nonpolar substances will actually spread out and dissolve in other nonpolar substances. We use this property of nonpolar substances all the time to make nonpolar solutions. But the key is you can't mix in a nonpolar substance with water because the water is going to clump together and the nonpolar substance is just going to be excluded. So hopefully now you understand a little bit more about how the properties of the different kinds of bonds that hold matter together will allow some matter to dissolve in water and will not allow other matter to dissolve in water.